The topic is basically reactive power management and voltage control during real time operation. Certainly not only the real time, we will look into the how this is being done at the planning level, how it is being done at the you know means policy level, what are the changes that is required and what are the problems that we face when there is no proper penalty mechanism for the reactive power in the system. Right now it is not there. Those who are dealing with the scheduling and dispatch, they those people already know that you check uh, active power balancing all the time, but there is no checking of reactive power yeah. balancing in real time operation, right? So that is one issue that we certainly face. Another thing is that you do you have a bit metering scheme. How much generation is produced? How much is consumed? What is the transmission losses? All these are there for you. You can monitor it. You can measure it and you have metering system for that. But for reactive power, it is not like that. Reactive power, we don't do any such kind of metering. There is only, you know, means uh, at, uh, you know, means ISTS level, if you ask me, then then reactive power at the boundary of ISTS or in the state there at that boundary, it is being measured and it is only being measured when it is exceeding 103% or exceeding, uh, it is below 97%. Then in the bulk, uh, how much reactive power, whether somebody is supporting it or somebody is deteriorating the voltage, that is being measured. But exactly it is not measured how much reactive power is coming into the system, how much it is getting into the reactors, how much a transmission system overall is producing throughout the operational, just like the generation, just like your active power, how much is the flow of active power throughout the day. We don't measure how much is the reactive power flow throughout the day. So that's the problem with the reactive power that we are still facing and we have to come out of it. So this just with a brief introduction, we will come to the topic. OK, so in uh, we all know that in active power I means in power system, we in AC power system, not DC. We are not talking about DC in AC power system. We have two kind of power I means uh, we deal with two kind of power. One is active, one is reactive. Active which help in doing the all the works, actual works, physical that it can be energy can be transformed. While there is a reactive power is also required, which doesn't do any real work, but it is the this, this reactive power is very much important because it is the power which provides or which supports the system with the force. Basically, the force that will help in moving of energy from this place to that place. OK, so that is the force which that uh, the force the that the electromagnetic force, what we call this force is being managed with the help of the reactive power into the system. It doesn't do any real work, but it helps in doing the actual providing the real work into the system. So what it does, this reactive power is basically it is the power that is being utilized for charging of a capacitor or it creates the magnetic field around any inductor. So this is the basically the two major job that is being done by the reactive power. And this exchange of reactive power between the capacitor and reactor helps in maintaining the electromagnetic force at various locations nodes in the grid. If the voltages are being maintained, then what will happen is that based on that a strength of the voltage, the active power can be transferred into the system very easily. We will look into that. You already know that active power transfer equation is there, right? P is equal to V1 into V2 divided by X into sine delta, right? So sine delta is the angular separation that is dealt with. The, that is how much load is there, how much generation is there. It depend upon the load generation balance and the whatever the impedance that you are having. But there are two things that is very important for transfer. That is what is the sending in voltage? What is the receiving in voltage, right? So if you're sending in or receiving in voltage is very deteriorated, then you will not be able to push that much amount of active power or you will not be able to transfer that much amount of uh, power from one place, the generator to the load center. So this that's why this reactive power is important to maintain these voltages at optimal point so that you can utilize the active power transfer to the maximum extent. And if your voltage is at the optimal point, right? V is very good. V is at the nominal voltage itself, V1 or V2, sending and receiving in both. What will happen for the same power transfer? Your sine delta will be very low, low right? Why and while if you want to move the same power and the voltage has reduced by let us say 10 percent, then your sine delta will certainly increase. So your stability margin will reduce. So that's why it is very important that reactive power has to be maintained properly into the system for the reactive means uh, stability aspect also. So what is the requirement of reactive power? 
So these already we discussed. Active power cannot be supplied if it is not voltage in the system is not high enough. Motor loads and other loads require reactive power to convert the flow of electrons to do any useful work. So let us say you are at your home, your voltage. We already faced these challenges in earlier days when we were uh, the I means, you know, means the radial interconnection in the system were there and uh, there were a lot of issue of the voltages at the low means uh, at our household levels, right? So that time we have seen that our motor load, whatever the motor that we have for the pumping of uh, means pumping loads basically. Uh, in that case, we have seen that motor produces a lot of sounds, motor is not optimally running or motor is not able to lift the water from the from the lower pipe, lower uh, you reservoir to the upper reservoir, those kind of situation we usually face in our home because the voltages were not supportive enough or the reactive power basically voltages or the reactive power that supports that voltage were not good enough into the system. So the, due to which the voltages were low and we were facing such kind of challenges. Then it is uh, required to establish the magnetic or electric field so that energy conversion can take place. This also we discuss, right? And due to due to reactive power, transformers transform this power. Means whenever you you have to you know means uh, change the voltage level, then this reactive power is the thing. You change the voltages, right? V1 and V2, the whatever the voltage ratio, turn ratio. So that also leads to this uh, means uh, power flow from the higher. Means you can change this reactive power transformer through the N1 and N2 so that your volt means how much power you wanted to transform the high voltage to low voltage that can also be decided. So I think uh, these are the major aspects that we already have covered that uh, and one thing is that there are two kind of resources of active and I uh, mean sir, reactive power into the system. One thing is that we have many devices which are providing the reactive power. Right, means which can generate the reactive power. So we call it as a source of the reactive power. And then there are devices which absorbs the reactive power, which uh, basically, so those are called the sink of reactive power, right? So there is a source and there is a sink. One thing you should know that reactive power is always in a balanced current move away, means you cannot do all this, like you can flow of active power can be done from one place to a very far away place but reactive power is not like that because you know means active power is doing the work basically so we can transfer this active power energy conversion can take place from one place to another place while the reactive power you have to maintain the voltage at each node so that the active power work can be transferred to different different location so for each node you have to maintain the voltages so for each node you have to control the what is the amount of reactive power that is going into the capacitor part and what is the amount of reactive power that is going into the inductor part, right? So inductor and capacitor, there will be always be a balance. In generally, there will always be a balance between that. Why you wanted to maintain a balance? Because the voltage will be, if you have a system at nominal voltage, you design a system at V. So that V will be dependent whether your active power reactive power due to the inductor is more or reactive power that is generating being uh, or being generated due to the capacitor is more. So if your capacitive part is more then voltage will go up. If your reactive power part is more or the inductive part is more the voltage will go down. So what is your best situation you try you will always try to maintain it at nominal voltage then what you have to do you always have to do the jugglery that is the operational in operation that the jugglery is being done. What you do is that you always try to maintain the voltage as nominal V for maintaining that you have to check whether the active power is more or reactive power. I mean, sorry, whether the inductive power is the more inductive or whether it is having a larger capacitive power. If that you can absorb simply by a voltage is on the higher side, you mean you know that there the capacitance is on the higher side. If voltage is on the lower side, then you know that reactor is on the higher side. React, react uh, means something inductor from the inductor side. So what you do when the voltage is on the higher side means capacitance is more, you add more inductor into the system to maintain this voltage. So what you do basically, what you are trying to do is that in each of this, uh, all this configuration, you are trying to balance the reactive power between the induct inductor and the capacitor portion of the transmission 
whatever the source and whatever the sinks are there for the reactive power in that you do this balance between the active uh, sorry the capacity pa reactive power and the inductive reactive power so based on that balance the voltage is maintained at the same nominal position so if you keep all these voltages same nominal position so balancing this you have to provide reactive support at that node itself you can't provide reactive power flow from different different location far away location you have to provide the reactive power support for the local position only okay so that's why it is very important to know that active power you know the stability aspect of active power you can do by placing equipments at far far away location while for reactive power voltage or uh, this stability you have to provide the support at the local so voltage is always a local quantity for control while if you see active power it comes from the you know means uh, if in the system it comes from the like load and generation balance right how much generation is there how much transmission system is there so that's why it can be controlled by the different entities at different different location far away location but for reactive power you have to do at local control only okay so hope i am uh, able to tell you means just like a storytelling i will tell you is how means uh, because many of the things will percolate finally at one position when we will discussing the operational point of view okay so there are two type of reactive power control generally our tendency as your system operation or any person who is doing the planning that is there it will do first is the load compensation another aspect is the voltage support in the system so what is load compensation and what is voltage support so load compensation i already told you load will always require some reactive power right in generally not the resistive load only the inductive and capacity load however the resistive load will also require reactive uh, sorry reactive power because you have a transmission system and at the end you have put a reactor okay so what will the reactor will extract a lot much amount of active power into the system so the vol voltage at that end point will be reducing so to maintain the voltage at the nominal unity power factor you have to pro give some reactive power at the end point so that's what we call as a load compensation you compensate the load so that it behaves at unity power factor so that your voltages at the load centers are at unity so that you get a very good quality of power power quality at your load center end so that's why it is important to have a load compensation so what is the importance is that this requires to improve the increase the power factor of the system balance the real power drawn from the system compensate voltage regulation and eliminate eliminate any current harmonics into the system and the second aspect is voltage support that we already in, i already informed you regarding that the main purpose is that you have to maintain the voltage at each node that is getting connected into the system so for that you have to provide the voltage support so to reduce the voltage fluctuation at any given terminal of the transmission line so these are the two major aspect of the reactive power while you are planning for the reactive power so in generally what we call uh, reactive power is also known as the keeper of the active power because it is very important that this is maintained and so that you can have a maximum active power transfer okay so uh, just so what i was telling this equation was like right p is equal to v1 v v1 v2 by x into sin delta so let us say this is the transmission line okay this is x this is v1 and this is v2 and let us say this is delta 0 and this is delta 1 so basically delta delta is should be equal to delta 0 minus delta 1 your active power will only transfer from the higher angle to the lower angle right and reactive power will flow from the higher voltages to the if v1 is uh, greater than v2 then reactive power will flow from the uh, v1 side to this is the flow of the reactive power m bar okay <laughs> so coming back to the point if you don't maintain this voltages at nominal position and you want to transfer the power p then certainly 
impedance of the transmission system let us assume that it is operating at one particular point of the day okay i am assuming one because impedance also changes with respect to the time uh, sorry temperature and the uh, means ambient temperature in the system and other factors how much spacing is there what is the means uh, what is the means you know means uh, during the different uh, wind speed how much spacing between the different conductor is there and what is the dielectric strength between the different uh, uh, at what different temperature will be there between the different conductors so these are the factor due to which the transmission line impedance is also not constant however let us assume that it is a constant quantity okay for it at any particular point of time and this is the let us say ki if i assume that this is one per unit and it is also one per unit so i am telling that and let us impedance is also one okay so what i will get is that p is equal to one one per unit uh, per unit in terms of let us say whatever the sine delta let us say delta is equal to 90 degree okay so we will be getting one power what will happen is that uh, the thing is that uh, if you reduce this power okay voltages are getting lower means it is let us say 0.8 and 0.8 okay so now earlier it was multiplication was 1 now it has come to 0.64 v1 into v2 right so to provide the same one per unit power you have to increase the delta but you can see that delta is already at a maximum power it is 190 degree so it cannot go beyond 90 degree because of the stability aspect so whenever your voltage is lower it directly impacts for the same amount of active power transfer it directly impacts your stability so that's why it is very important the var compensation means if you have to improve the voltage then you have to here put some reactive power compensation to move this 0.8 to 1 and again here also 0.8 to 1 so this var compensation improves the stability of any ac system by increasing the maximum active power that can be transmitted so if you improve this one then your voltage will get improved and you can transfer the maximum power active power uh, another aspect we this is just uh, means uh, if you ask me that whether i will be able to utilize it in the real time operation no these are not this second point is not for the real time but it is just a means it is for the basic concept